Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Barbecue Tips Podcast. I'm Christy Vanover, a competitive pit master, the girl behind one of the top barbecue websites, girlscangrill.com, and a contestant on Food Network's Barbecue Brawl. I'm here to bring you barbecue tips in less than 15 minutes to help you up your barbecue game. Let's go. This past weekend, Team Girls Can Grill competed in the Game On competition from the Nevada Barbecue Association. John Moles Meats in Las Vegas provided us with salmon, quail, and a bison tenderloin. Team Girls Can Grill turned in some salmon tacos, some grilled teriyaki quail sliders, and bison tenderloin that we turned into filet mignon steaks. You can see all of the pictures on my Instagram and Facebook. Also, we got first in salmon, second in quail, and third in bison. Congrats to all up in my grill and Bad Rabbit Barbecue for your calls. This week, I attended the Specialty Food Association Fancy Food Show in Las Vegas. This is where hundreds of specialty food brands come out and they showcase their products to media, brands, and distributors. They talk about trends and innovation. There were a few brands present from the barbecue and grilling industry, including Cosmos Q, who many of you probably know, and Rufus Teague Barbecue. They were there demonstrating their sauces and their rubs. Blue's Hog was also present. I used so many of their products on the competition circuit. They had their full line of rubs and marinades and sauces. And then along with them, Marble Ridge Farms was also showcasing their ready-made meat products. So in case you don't know, Tim Shear, who owns Blues Hog, also owns Marble Ridge Farms. I got a chance to taste the Marble Ridge Farm Wagyu sausage and it was really delicious. Speaking of Wagyu, there was a whole Japanese pavilion there where they had a ton of Wagyu products along with other Japanese specialty foods. That Wagyu was some of the most marbled that I've ever seen in my life. It looked really amazing. For this week's podcast, I'm going to touch on some of the specialty foods that I saw that weren't exactly in the barbecue market, but there is a little bit of crossover. I've got to start with grilled pickles. Randy's Pickles claims that they have the cleanest, healthiest pickles on the market. No chemicals, no preservatives, all of that stuff. Why grill a pickle? Let's hear what they had to say. This is our sideburn. This is a grilled cucumber half pickled in a brine of red peppers, black pepper, and garlic. It is a full-size cucumber half, belongs on every dish, and quite frankly, I'm gonna challenge you that it's not gonna make it to your dish. You're gonna eat the jar before you get done. And why grill the pickle versus every other type of pickle on the market? You know what, every other, well, because every other type of pickle on the market is just like every other type of pickle on the market. It's kind of boring. It's a category that really hasn't had a lot of innovation in forever. And what we were looking for is, we know a lot of people use pickles in barbecue, they use them for cookouts and grill outs because they love that charred flavor, that carbonized flavor. So we worked for a long time to figure out how to do it on a, on a cucumber without cooking the cucumber and ruining it. Uh, and now you can get that kind of flavor in that, in that pickle as well. I tasted them. They had a great crunch, a nice balanced tangy flavor, and then you get just a hint of that smoky char flavor. It's definitely something that's unique. There were several booths related to cocktails and mocktails, including cocktail mix-ins and specialty olives, but my favorite was tongue and peat. It was a smoky tomato juice that's used to make a Bloody Mary mix. Let's hear from Hannah, the founder of the Scottish-based company. Hi, um, so I'm Hannah. I'm the founder of Tongue and Peat, which is a Scottish Bloody Mary mixer. We use peat, which is smoky mud, found in the grounds of Scotland. Wait, stop the tape. Smoky mud. That's right, peat is actually partially decomposed plant matter that forms along the highlands of Scotland. That is then burned into a type of coal that's used to make scotch whiskey. To make tongue and peat, they chop fresh seasonal tomatoes by hand and then they cold smoke them in the Scottish peat for about 16 hours. I don't usually like tomato juice, but this stuff was really good. I think that the smoke flavor just really made it so much better. There were so many different cheese booths at the fancy food show. I mean, you couldn't walk a couple booths until you ran into more cheese. It was all so delicious from so many different countries, all regions of the United States. There was just everything you could think of. But what really stopped me in my tracks was when I got to Grillies. This was a booth that was grilling their cheese. You don't usually think of grilling cheese other than maybe a grilled cheese sandwich, but they were taking blocks of their cheese and putting them on a waffle iron and on a skillet. What that was doing was creating this beautiful golden crust on the outside and then the inside was melted and ooey and gooey. The reason they're able to do that is because their type of cheese is called halloumi. If you're not familiar with halloumi, what makes it different is that it has such a high melting point. The Grilli's halloumi cheese is made in Cyprus, which is an island near Greece in the Mediterranean. Then once you put this on the grill, again, it's savory, it's salty, it's crispy on the outside, and it's creamy on the inside. They said that you can find this at Whole Foods. For the past several years, 
plant-based products have been on the rise. They've definitely been the trend. There was a wide range of plant-based products at the Fancy Food Show, all the way from plant-based dairy to plant-based meats. The simplest, purest thing was like grilled vegetables, pure vegetables that they were flash freezing and then you could buy them already grilled so you didn't have to go through the grilling process. One of the most unique things that I saw that was in the plant-based meat category was a vegan turkey. This turkey was made out of soy and wheat proteins, but you pull it out of the box and it's actually shaped like a turkey. Like they take the materials used to make the meat and they form it in this mold and then freeze it. Then you take it home, you bake it in the oven. They recommend you cook it at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes. It even has a cavity that where you can put your vegan stuffing in it and it comes with vegan gravy. So if you're into the plant-based meat alternatives, it was definitely a unique way to get turkey because then you still get the shape and kind of appearance of turkey. Um, that's not exactly my jam. I prefer actual meat. I don't, I don't like the taste and texture of the soy-based products, but it was a cool alternative. And if you are vegan and you want to have a turkey experience, you could also throw that on your grill or smoker. Even though the vegan turkey isn't quite my thing, I am always interested when people find plant-based meat alternatives, but I like the ones that are just a little bit more natural and pure. The Montague family has come up with something called shroomacon. It's basically taking mushrooms, slicing them into thin strips that look like the appearance of bacon, and then they only add four other ingredients, smoke flavor, olive oil, salt, and pepper. It is made of sliced mushrooms, okay? Let me tell you, you'll be able to fool whoever is in your family. When you fry this up, put it on a BLT, put it on a burger, they will not know the difference, but it's so much healthier than regular bacon. No cholesterol, no saturated fat, lower sodium, and just as easy to cook as regular bacon. I was hesitant to think like, how could you get a mushroom to taste like bacon? be crispy like bacon, have that texture and appearance of bacon, but they did it. They fried it up in a skillet with just a little bit of oil. You can also throw it in an air fryer. And then when it's done, it's crispy like bacon and it has that smoke essence that you enjoy from bacon, but it's way less calories, no cholesterol, way lower in fat, and even lower in sodium. They're actually gonna be on Shark Tank on January 26th. I'm excited to see the Montagues, to see if they get the funding from the Shark Tank. It's a cool product. Again, if you're looking for a meat alternative that's plant-based, but way more natural, you should give this a shot. There were a ton of seasonings and spices at the Fancy Food Show, but there was only one that really caught my attention, and that was the dinosaur egg from the Philippines. The product from Crossroad Salts looks like a partially cracked dinosaur egg, but it's actually salt. To make the dinosaur egg, they take coconut husks and soak them in seawater. Then they let that dry and they smoke it with mango wood and mahogany wood to create a charcoal. Then that charcoal filters more seawater in these clay pots and then it kind of smokes and roasts to create the salt. As the seawater cools and evaporates in the pot, it leaves a layer of salt and then they add more seawater and it continues the process until the pot is full of salt. It takes several months. Then they turn the pot over, they crack it and it looks Looks like a dinosaur egg. This is Asin Tibuok, um, a sea salt from Bohol, Philippines. It's a southern island and it is very unique because there's only one family that still makes this and when you get the finished product, you use it like this on for finishing and for grilling and the flavor profile on the top of the egg actually comes out differently than the flavor on the bottom and the consistency as well. This is going to come out like a powder almost and it has a smokier flavor because of the clay pot. They also have a coarse sea salt called Ilocano Asin. This is Ilocano Asin. This is from Pangasinan, Philippines. It's in the northern part of the islands. This one is a coarse grain salt, hand harvested. And what's really cool about it is it's almost hollow in comparison to other salts. And it will almost like dissolve when you put it on your tongue. Um, but it's great for grilling and finishing. Crossroads Salt said that many of the top chefs in Las Vegas are using these salts at their restaurants. I was fortunate enough to taste it on site and to take a few samples home, so I'll be cooking with some of it soon. Well, that's a wrap for this week's episode. I realized that the last two episodes have been a little bit different because I attended two international food shows, the Consumer Electronics Show and the Fancy Food Show. That's the advantage of living in Las Vegas. There is always something going on here. Actually, this spring, I'll be attending the National Hardware Show and the Kitchen and Bath Show. Before then, the next few episodes are gonna be 
very food and barbecue specific. The Super Bowl is gonna be held in Las Vegas this year, so I'm gonna to touch on some tailgating tips. I'm also gonna pass along some of my pastrami tips before St. Patrick's Day. If you found this week's episode interesting, please leave me a review and a comment. I love hearing from you guys. As always, you can find hundreds of recipes and thousands of barbecue tips at girlscangrill.com. You can also find me on all the socials. Until next week, happy grilling.